Good evening, everybody. Your Father hears you. Your Father is sending help. He is worth the wait. Welcome to our breviary uh, online here at Westwind. Uh, tonight we are looking at Exodus uh, chapter 3. And it says this, Then the Lord said, I have surely seen the affliction of my people who are in Egypt and have heard their cry because of their taskmasters. I know their sufferings, and I have come down to del deliver them out of the hand of the Egyptians and to bring them up out of that land to a good and broad land, a land flowing with milk and honey, to the place of the Canaanites, the Amorites, and the Jebusites. And now behold, the cry of the people of Israel has come to me, and I have also seen the oppression with which the, is the Egyptians oppressed them. Come, I am now sending you to Pharaoh that you might bring my people, the children of Israel, out of Egypt. And when you hear this passage, you, you might kind of feel like you're stepping into the middle uh, of a story. And you should feel that way because that's the thing that's happening here. Um, this is a dialogue that God is having um, with Moses. Um, and right before this has happened, uh, Moses has experienced a, a, a crazy situation, maybe something you've heard before, um, the burning bush. He, see, he sees a bush that is burning. Uh, he goes up to it. God reveals himself to him there. And then God um, tells him a plan that he has. And, and, and basically, in summary, um, God's plan goes something like this. He says, I have um, seen the affliction of my people. I mean, he's referring to the people of Israel, uh, his people, God's people, uh, who were in slavery to the Egyptians. So he says, I've, I've, I've seen the situation that they're in. And then he says, and I've also heard their cries. Um, the Bible tells us in another place that the, that the Israelites were continually, every day, crying out to God, asking for uh, relief and deliverance from the situation. So he says, I've, I've, I've seen the situation of my people. I've heard their cries for deliverance. And then he says, I'm aware of their situation, so I'm coming to help them. Four things that God says. He says, I've seen it, I hear it, I'm aware of it, and I'm coming. Now, now this is a side note here, um, but those are pretty good promises for us today. Um, we should know, you should know, that in any situation, no matter what it is, that these are the things that God is doing. God sees you. He sees what's going on. He hears your prayers. They aren't lost on him. Um, he's aware of the situation you're in. And that's a pretty cool thing to think about, especially right now. now I, was, I was talking to someone this week who said, it, it, it seems crazy that in the middle of all of the things that are happening in our world right now with the coronavirus, that God could care about my little bit of insignificant drama. But here's the truth about God. God is always aware. He's always aware of every situation. And it doesn't matter if it's big or small. If it's big to you, then it matters to God. So he sees, he hears, he's aware, and then he's coming. He's doing something. He's showing up uh, to work in our situation. But the thing that I want to point out to you is what he says after all of those things. I see it, I hear it, I'm aware of it, and I'm coming. And then he says to Moses, so I want you to go and talk to Pharaoh. Isn't that interesting? God's plan is a person. You would imagine, if you were Moses, that you're sitting there going, yeah, 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 I get it, I see it. You see it, you hear it, you're on the move, you're on the job, that's awesome. Now I can just sit back and watch the cool thing you do. But God doesn't let Moses off the hook in any way. He says, no, you are the solution to this. See, when, when God identifies a problem in the world, he, he chooses a person or a people. When, when God sees injustice, when God sees suffering, his plan is always his people. Uh, so, so when we see something happening in the world and think to ourselves, man, I really hope that God shows up in that situation. When we pray that God would show up, that's, that's actually a pretty dangerous prayer um, because more often, more often than not, we're, we're the ones who are going to be recruited into that. And, and, and if God's plans are his people, then, then you should also know this. When, when you feel a prompting towards something, that means that God has identified that as a problem. Now, tease this out for a second. If, if you ever had that moment where you see something and you go, man, nobody else seems to care about this, but it really matters to me. Like, I see it. You know, I had this experience a, a decade ago when we, when we started the, the Hub uh, Teen Center, a, a nonprofit charity here in Jackson. 
I, I, was, I was sitting there talking to everyone I could saying, you know, th there's all these kids. There's all these kids that they're not connected to church. They, they're at risk. They don't have people who are empowering them and for them. And that's not fair. Like I had that as a kid. My kids get that. It's not fair. And, and, and people honestly quite often would be like, oh yeah, that's cool. Good luck with that. You know, and then just go back to whatever they were doing. And I remember being so frustrated, being like, God, why don't you do something? Why don't more people care about this? And I just remember realizing one day in my heart that it's, it, it was as if God was saying to me, hey, you care about it. And the reason that you care about it, the reason that you woke up one day and thought this thing matters on a high level to me is because I put that in you. You see what I'm saying? God prompts us in response to the problems that he sees in the world. So right now, maybe you care about a thing and nobody else cares about it. Maybe you are, are, are passionate about something and you're so busy trying to recruit other people to it when instead you should be really realizing, wow, if, if, if I'm following Jesus, if I'm listening to the Holy Spirit and, and, and this is in my heart, then that's a prompting from God because there's a problem. And you know, Moses' story goes on, and he does. It, it takes him a while. He fights God on this, and that, that's a thing we do sometimes. We, we would rather God just fixed it. Um, but eventually, Moses goes on, and he does. He, he, he solves the problem with, with, the, with the help and the power of God. He leads the people out of Egypt, and he, he makes a difference in the world. He partners with God in the work that he's doing. And, and we have the same opportunity to do that. So that's my hope and my prayer for you today, that you will listen to the promptings that God has put in you. When you see something in the world that isn't right, um, believe that God sees it too and that he is inviting you into that story along with him. Take this mind that's become its own And so out for a song It forgets where it belongs Take this heart And resuscitate It's been lifeless far too long Wounded by its very wrongs Take these lips that I spoke in hell and infuse them with your song. Take it all, take it all, gracious God. Take these eyes that have cast a glance towards the things that are not mine to wander I'm inclined. Take these feet they across the line when they should. From this 
shall I sing your praise? There is no grander name. You forgive, Lord, you raise. Gracious God. gracious and compassionate slow to anger and rich in love the Lord is gracious and compassionate Distraction is the enemy of intimacy. During Jesus' final night with his friends, they sat down to observe the Passover meal together. And there was a lot going on. There were a lot of distractions. Imagine that you're Jesus, and you know your time is coming soon. The clock is ticking. This is your final moment to enjoy song and laughter and a good meal with the people that matter most to you. And if you're Jesus, you have a sense of urgency, a sense of, of, of requirement that this meal be special. You know later you'll go and pray and you know that as the hour draws near, you're gonna feel more and more anxious, more, more stressed out. You're gonna have to draw deeply on the presence and peace of your father. But, but at dinner, for the meal, you just want to be with the people you love. The problem is that the people you love are, well, they're distracted. They're distracted about what's going to happen. Not only who's going to betray you, not only who's going to express the most bravado, but they get into an argument over who's the greatest, who's the most important, who's the most significant. They're singing songs. Servants are coming and going. There's a collection of people there, and it's, well, there, there's just a lot that takes their attention away from you. Now, imagine that you're Jesus. And to try and recenter them, to try and refocus them, you, you wash their feet. You tell them how much they mean to you. You tell them how much you've been looking forward to this evening. Long have I desired to share this meal with you. But distraction works its magic. And the disciples fail to appreciate this time and this meal with their king. Our gracious Lord Jesus sat at the table with the people he loved most, just like he sits at your table with you every time you eat and drink. And he held up this bread and he said, this is my body broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And this cup is my blood. The blood of the new covenant. Do this in remembrance of me. For a little while longer, he promised he would be with them. And then he told them he had to go away to prepare another meal that they will enjoy soon. So as much as we remember that last supper, we also anticipate our final supper with our Lord at his table in his home. Uh, grace and peace be unto you. We'll see you tomorrow. God is sending you. You are his divine response. 
His spirit is a prompt, leading his people to act, calling his people.